this introduction to shoot training safety for your dog. Now, yes, it's important to train your dog to accept safely both from the barrel area of the chute and through the fabric area. And we do this by slowly training by having this rolled up close to the barrel. And we teach the dog to go through and accept this fabric falling on them and eventually we have a closed fabric. But what a lot of people don't like to or don't realize is very important to uh, address is what the dog should be doing with their head when coming through. I like to teach dog that they must drop their head. They have to keep their head down. If they raise their head up, and I've seen this done in trials, the fabric has a tendency to fold in on the dog and it can wrap and this is where you'll see dogs that start rolling and wrapping through on the chute in a dangerous manner. So what I will do a lot of times is put a target, it could be a ball, a treat container, whatever works for your dog, out at the end. We want it really kind of close because we want the dog looking for it right away. As soon as this dog goes through, their old thought at that moment going towards the end is to drop the head because they know there's something at the end. This will help ingrain in them that that's the proper way to handle this. If you do this from the very beginning, your dog will learn to keep that head down. Now there is another thing that uh, sometimes happens is that when the handler is sending the dog through the chute and then they're about to do a cross to the far side, a lot of dogs are already planning it that as a movement and so they're trying to look ahead and so they're turning their head and look ahead with it. So it wouldn't hurt but at the same time when you know you're going to work with that just to move it by a few paces one side to the other so the dog gets accustomed even if they're going to be concerned with where they're going next, they're looking at the floor, the ground, get that head down and peripherally. As soon as they get out, they can see where to go with this. Now, I'm going to bring out uh, one of my dogs and I'll show you the importance of teaching what we call round the clock on the shoot entry. Okay, as I mentioned, I've taken one of the dogs I have, and I can do this both with the little dog or the big dog, but what we've done is taught round the clock for the entry into the chute. So it shouldn't matter where I stand, the dog should understand how to find the entry point. This is another example of a target, which is, works really good. You can also get these over at uh, Clean Run. All right, Eddie, shoot. Remember, you can put your treat right down, put it in, in front. Now she's so well trained, I really have not been using a um, any kind of a target with her because she has done this so much. and. Abby, come. I'll show from here. Abby, shoot. Get it. Go. Good girl. Yay. Good girl. She's little. She's got to find a little spot to get through here. I should have straightened that in between. But got the idea that I didn't even use body motion. I did not even prompt her with a hand, a foot. Yes, I did use the word so she'd know what obstacle is I was asking for. Now, you start out by training that by working a position up in front. Abby, go. And you would start close to it, you'd ask for it, and you would point. Now, see, I can do that without any word at this point because my motion will tell her what is looked for. Whoops. You got that one. Okay. So then after we've done a straight one, we'll come over to the side. Abby, come over here. Shoot. So I used that that time because she's wondering if I was pointing for her to go out. But she knows the name so well that anywhere in a trial, when we're in a course, I can say the word and she's looking for where that shoot is. Be careful if you're trying to, Abby, uh, if you get your obstacle names mixed up, which I did one time, and she's looking all over, where's that shoot? It wasn't even a standard and you can kind of help them in when they're first learning the round the clock. But you have to make it good. Now she's a very food motivated dog. As you can see I have a problem. I just dropped a treat. So she's got to find that treat or she's basically not going to really work for me too well. So a food motivated dog works well with this type of thing. You can use a toy. If you, and I'll show you that with the next dog. What we're going to do is do that toy out here and we'll be dropping the toy out here as a reward. Hey, good girl. Okay, now I'll show you with the toy motivated dog. And a 
little larger size, so you can see the way the chute's working when she comes out at the end. Now, remember, it's really important to repetitively use a target or tree or whatever you can use at the end that's going to motivate the dog to drop the head. Eventually, you make it more random so that it's not something the dog's missing in the trials. They never know when it's going to be there. It's full life behind it. Okay. Are you ready? There you go. Good girl. Stay. Remember what practicing. Always straighten that shoot out so you don't have an accident with the dog going in there and getting caught. It all takes is a really bad experience and it's a lot harder to retrain. Okay, Gypsy Cup. So now, here we are at the opposite end. So I'm going to send her from this point. Good girl. <laughs> 